In this video, I discuss whether the Tesla Model Y is the ultimate retirement car or just a retirement money trap. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt. Four weeks ago, I posted a video right here on YouTube called the best way to buy a car in retirement, new, used, or leased. At the time, the conclusion was to buy the car gently used because depreciation is front loaded and utilization is spread evenly over the car's useful life. As I expected, the comments were vibrant and the viewers exchanged their opinions not only with me, but with each other. So mission accomplished, that's what I hope for on just about every video that I put out. There was one theme that kept coming up again and again in the comments section, by the way, and it's a theme, frankly, that's been haunting me for many years. I'll tell you why a little bit later. But that theme is why didn't I include EVs in the analysis? electric vehicles. One viewer said, in our 80s, we'd like to be down to one EV. Another said, everyone I know is leasing except for my Tesla owner friends. Still another viewer asked if we could do the analysis again using the Tesla Model 3 or Y versus a used 3 or Y. The comments kept coming in. One viewer said that every car on the road will be an EV by 2035. Another said that my next car will be an SUV and I have no intention of ever buying an electric car. Admittedly, I underestimated the community's passion for EVs one way or another, so I did the only thing one can do in this situation. I went out and purchased a new Tesla Model Y so that I could see for myself. After all, and I think you know this about me, I wouldn't recommend anything to you that I wouldn't personally own, and I put my money where my mouth is. The truth is, I owned a Tesla before. I owned the Model S and I totaled it six months after buying it. At the time, I vowed never to buy a Tesla again. Yes, it was super cool, not only because of the mission of Tesla, which is quite intriguing, but I said at the time that if I was to design a car from the ground up with no preconceived notion of what that car should look like, it would look quite similar to a Tesla automobile if I had the capability to design a car like that, which I don't. So why would I then say, Gasoline cars are more reliable than electric cars. It was because of the accident. If you had looked at the car from the back or from the side, you wouldn't know that it had been in an accident. But the front end of the Tesla was clipped by a car coming through an intersection, and what would have been a minor fender bender turned out to be a total of the Tesla. The reason, by the way, is that the battery sits on the aluminum frame, and if the car gets hit from the side, or at least meaningfully from the side, the frame bends. And once the frame bends even a little bit, you have to replace the whole frame because that's where the battery sits. You can't bend aluminum back to its original position. Truth be told, even though I said that, I have been thinking about buying a Tesla again. And the Tesla Model Y is the perfect car, primarily because the price is so much less than the Model S. First, I wouldn't buy the Model S again. Why? Because it's 78.2 inches wide. That is a wide car. It's hard to get into a garage without scraping the sides. The Model Y is 75.6 inches wide, so it is enough of a difference so that it's much easier to get it into a garage spot. But before I purchased the Model Y, I needed to know that the technology had advanced. The biggest challenge I found with the Model S, the old Model S back in 2018, was that I needed to press the equivalent of Control-Alt-Delete on a computer. It's the two buttons on the steering wheel plus the brake. When you push the three of them together, that resets the entire system. And I had to do that frequently on the Model S. Finally, and as much as it sounds great, the full self-driving option didn't make a lot of sense to me. Why? Because it's an extra $12,000 and it hasn't been approved yet. I also knew that getting approval would take some time because it doesn't get approved at the federal level. It gets approved at the state level. If you want to drive in New York City, New York City needs to approve you driving a fully automated vehicle, for example. Also on my previous car, I had Autopilot, which is the previous generation of what they're offering today, and it scared the heck out of me. Autopilot contained many of the features of today's full self-driving mode, and to be fair to Elon Musk and team, it was very precise and it worked much of the time. However, I didn't like giving up 
control of the vehicle and I had to keep my hands on the steering wheel anyway. That's the only way that autopilot works and that's the only way that full self-driving works right now anyway. Also, a feature that I absolutely hate about autopilot is that it is extremely precise. Now you ask yourself, why is that a problem? Well, it's not if you're being followed by the police and you want to make sure that you don't get pulled over for swerving from one lane to the next, but it stays in the middle of the lane, even when you're going around a curve. Try taking a curve in the exact middle instead of on the inside of the curve and your beverage will go flying. No thanks. But I didn't experience closure on the Tesla. I loved the car and then it was suddenly gone. And I replaced it with a very sensible gas engine automobile. But something inside of me still wanted to own the future of driving. All right, let's talk about the cost to drive the car. A big part of the Tesla experience is what I call fuel arbitrage. Recharging the car, the cost to recharge the car versus the cost of refueling a gas powered automobile. The electricity cost using my home charger anyway is about 25% of the cost to refuel a similar gas powered automobile. But what I really loved about owning the Tesla and what I really love about owning this Tesla is the ability to charge it at home. I don't have to wait in line. Typically I would buy gas on the way to the train station or on the way home from the train station. On the way to the train station, I'm generally rushing to get to the train and I don't have time to stop, which means that I have to buy gas on the way home. And when you drive your car home from the train station, you're pretty tired, at least I am, by the time I get in that car. So if the fuel gauge is on E, I have to do it. But parking it in the garage and plugging in the electric pump, so to speak, and then just letting it charge overnight is a godsend. I also like the cameras all around the car and on the inside. This is particularly useful if you happen to stumble upon an EV hater. And yes, they are out there. Someone gave me the bird today when I was driving the Model Y. And if you have someone who gets out of their car and starts walking towards you, keys your car, rear end your car, or one of the other things that can happen to your car, well, the eight cameras on the outside and the one on the inside will definitely capture it, will likely capture it anyway, because they have three in the front, two on the sides, one that looks forward, one that looks backwards, one in the back, and one on the interior of the car. You can also look at any of these views live from your Tesla mobile app. So you can monitor your car in real time. I also love the fact that the car can preheat itself or pre-cool itself, depending on what time of year it is, at a pre-designated time in the morning and at the push of the app. If you want your car to be cool or hot when you get off the train and you walk through the parking lot, by the time you get to the car, the inside will be exactly as you like it. If you had a gas powered automobile, you'd need to start your engine first before you set the climate. Now let's talk about the cost. The Tesla Model Y comes in three different versions. The standard Model Y, the long range Model Y, and the performance Model Y. All three have all wheel drive and essentially the same features. The big difference is the size of the battery and the acceleration speed, how fast you can go from zero to 60 or whatever. The standard Model Y has a range of 279 miles, the long range Model Y 330 miles, and the performance Model Y 303 miles. Next up, we're gonna go through the cost. At the end, I'm gonna show you how to get an extra $3,000 off, in most cases anyway, and this isn't advertised. The standard Model Y isn't cheap, but it's about the same as the Toyota Camry when all is said and done, and Tesla will tell you it's actually cheaper. This is true, by the way, if you look at the total cost, including the cost to operate the Model Y, not just the cost to purchase the Model Y. For those of you who watched the previous video, I told you the cash price of the Camry XSE was $38,692. And looking at the standard Model Y, the advertised cost is $47,740. This puts the standard Model Y a full $9,048 ahead of the Toyota Camry. So how can it be less? If you look at the Tesla website, Tesla says that the Model Y is $36,640. This puts that car a full $2,000 less than the Toyota Camry. How could that be? Well, $36,640 includes operating cost savings. 
For most people, this is a real number, but for some, it might actually be ambitious. And still, for others, the savings is even more. Let's talk about this. Even though the cash price of the Tesla Model Y is $47,740, the federal government is giving a $7,500 rebate for Tesla buyers if your income doesn't exceed certain limits. What are those limits? Well, if you're single, as of right now anyway, it's $150,000 per year. And if you're married, it's $300,000 per year. So the vast majority of you will qualify for the federal rebate. Many states offer an additional rebate, mine included. New York, for example, offers a $600 rebate if you purchase the Model Y. I haven't included any state rebates in the analysis because it does vary from state to state. So if you include the $7,500 rebate, this brings the purchase price down to $40,240. This puts it within the range, a little outside of the cost of the Toyota Camry but certainly within a few thousand dollars. Now, something that Tesla doesn't advertise is that they carry inventory and the cost of inventory is expensive. So if you help them clear their inventory, they'll give you an additional discount. When I checked the price of the Tesla Model Y, looking at a basic configuration, I saw that there was $3,000 off available if I would just take delivery in Brooklyn instead of out where I live. So the $40,240 car becomes a $37,240 car, and this is before the math around fuel savings. Tesla assumes that the average driver out there drives about 10,000 miles per year and compares the cost of driving 10,000 miles if you drove a gas vehicle versus their EV, assuming that the gas-powered vehicle gets about 25 miles per gallon. And that's about right if you look at the Toyota Camry. That's an average of highway and city driving. Tesla assumes that the cost of gasoline is $3.52 a gallon, and the cost for electricity is 16 cents per kilowatt hour. 3.52 seems low. The national average is currently 3.92 when looking at all grades and formulations. So the savings might even be more. And by the way, my electric bill is exactly 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So that is spot on. So if you drive 10,000 miles, your car gets an average of 25 miles per gallon, gas is $3.52 per gallon, electricity is 16 cents per kilowatt hour, your fuel costs go from $1,400 per year to $480 per year. So you save just over $900 per year. So there are a lot of ifs, but Tesla isn't wrong on these ifs for most people. For me, for example, gasoline is $4.50 a gallon where I live, so the savings is even more. I also tend to drive closer to 12,000 miles per year, so my actual savings is $1,680 per year. That's $10,800 over a six-year period. Anecdotally, since there's no engine or transmission, maintenance repair costs should be very, very low, at least for 200,000 miles or so. There are also no oil changes. You don't need to change the muffler and other expenses like that just don't exist with the Tesla. Now, the biggest complaint about Tesla ownership is the time it takes to charge the vehicle. If you want to put 200 miles on your battery, it takes about 15 minutes at a Tesla supercharger or four to five hours if you're using your home charger. Most people can get their mind around 15 minutes, but four or five hours at home, this is a problem for some people. But it's important to note that most people also charge their car overnight. So you plug it in when you get home and it's available when you wake up the next day and you get in the car. And frankly, most people don't let their car get down to 20% where they won't have the opportunity to drive one or more times if necessary before they charge the vehicle. Also, one really important point, even though the advertised mileage is 279 miles or 330 miles for the standard of the long range Model Y, 279 and 330 aren't the actual miles. Why? Because you can't let your Tesla Model Y get down to 20 miles before charging it. You can do that with a Camry. In fact, there's a good chance if you drive your car and you get down to five or 10 miles, you'll be able to find a gas station somewhere, but you can't get that close on your battery. You need to allow for a bit of buffer. Not a lot, mind you, because Tesla has done a really good job of building their supercharger network. Right now they have 1800 supercharger stations, if you want to call them those, around the country. That's a lot, and you should be able to go coast to coast and charge your vehicle along the way. But when you compare 1800 to the 
145,000 gas stations in this country, you're talking about 1.2% of the locations of a normal gas station. And you don't want to be in a position where you're in the middle of nowhere and you have 50 miles left to the next supercharger and 30 miles left on your battery. On the flip side, and this is something that you don't really get with a gas-powered automobile, Tesla has something called a Tesla trip planner. This will show you where the Tesla superchargers are along the trip and plug them in as waypoints so that you aren't in a position where you do run out of charge and you don't have enough distance on your battery to get to the next station. Tesla superchargers are in most locations. They're often off of major highways, usually in the back of shopping centers so that you can charge your car and go use the facilities or have something to eat or maybe even do a little bit of shopping. Now let's talk about the drive. If this is your first time driving a Tesla, there are four things that you will either love or hate about the car. The first is that since you're driving an electric car, there's no gear shifting. This means no noticeable decrease in speed as you start to accelerate. Zero to 30 feels about the same as 30 to 60 miles an hour, for example. The second is that there's absolutely no engine noise. The only way you can tell how fast you're going is with your eyes. You can't hear a thing. Now, for some people, this is a non-starter. They want to feel their car muscling up to the speed that they want to drive at. For me, the evenness of the speed change and the tranquility of the silence gives me absolute clarity in the driving experience. For others, they don't want that. The third point is something called regenerative braking. Now, when you drive your car, your gas-powered car, you consume energy getting it up to the speed that you're going to eventually drive at. And when you brake, all of that kinetic energy just disappears. Now with an EV, once you reach your cruising speed, when you take your foot off of the accelerator, your car starts to brake. You can feel it brake and that braking is intentional. It's taking all of that energy and putting it back in the battery. So if you want to keep driving, you have to keep your foot on the gas unless you're using something like cruise control. This is a weird feeling until you get used to it. Then, at least for me anyway, I gained an additional sense of control with the regenerative braking. If my foot isn't on the accelerator, then I should be braking. But with a gas-powered vehicle, you just coast until you hit the brake. This is particularly true if you're going downhill. Of course, with a car that can actually drive itself, Tesla comes with the next generation of intelligent cruise control. So if you actually want to take your foot off the gas pedal, the accelerator, excuse me, you can. The last thing is that Tesla has steering autocorrect. In case you drive over the center line, in most cases anyway, it will put you back into your lane. Two things about this. You can override it. It's a nudge. It's not a hard correct. And there's no guarantee because if you're driving and the road isn't well lit, the lines are a little bit dirty, or there's something else happening where your cameras are just, your camera lens is just dirty, you can't count on it. It's a helper, it's not a guarantee. And for completeness, the Model Y Performance, which is the car that you see here, is not the one that I'm recommending to you because I pay for some things that, frankly, I don't think you need to pay for and I wouldn't pay for again. I don't need to go 155 miles an hour. I don't need to go from zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. I purchased the Model Y Performance version because I like the look of the wheels. But truth be told, I took the car off of sport mode and put it onto what's called chill mode because I got a little queasy when I did try to go from zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. Once I put it in chill mode, it became an absolute joy to drive. And truth be told, if I was to buy the Model Y again, I probably wouldn't get the performance version. I would just get the wheels that are similar, but not as nice as an upgrade. Okay, let's talk about the stuff that makes a Tesla great, particularly for retirees. The first is that the dash is simple. Admittedly, when I first got in the car, I didn't love the dash. This is because I was used to the fighter cockpit style manual gauges, speedometer, oil temperature, coolant, gas gauges, and RPMs. So having everything on a flat panel seemed weird to me. However, there is no need for all of that. The engine never overheats because there is no engine. This also means no oil, no coolant, no RPMs, and no gas gauge. The Tesla has voice commands for just about anything the car can do except driving related commands. You can't turn on autopilot using a voice command, for example. That makes sense because you really want to do that with intent. Otherwise, you will feel like you just accidentally got on a roller coaster. I'll talk about autopilot a bit more later. An example of some commands, 
make it cooler, increase the wiper speed, fold the mirrors, open the glove compartment. You can also instruct your car to play your favorite artist or song. I would demonstrate this, but music artists get funny about their music being used without permission on YouTube, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Another great feature is that your car will auto-lock itself when you walk away. This is because your phone is your car key, and when your Bluetooth gets far enough away, it disconnects. When it disconnects, that signals to your car to lock the vehicle. This seems to happen at about 20 to 30 feet, and conversely, when you're coming back and your Bluetooth is re-engaged, your car will unlock itself. Now the biggest problem with this is sometimes your phone dies. And with a dead phone, you won't be able to get into your car. Tesla knows this, so it gives you a backup plan. And that is the Tesla, it looks like a credit card. And you just touch the side of your car with it and your car will unlock. Another feature that retirees will like is the charge at home feature. I don't know about you, but I hate waiting in line, and sometimes it takes five or 10 minutes to get in and out of a gas station, and that's five or 10 minutes that I could use to do something else. The charge at home feature is wonderful. When you drive into your garage, you simply plug your charger into your car. It actually looks like a gas handle. You plug it into the spot in your car, and it starts to charge. You can charge it overnight. Next is dog mode. Now, if you own a dog like me and he or she never leaves your side, dog mode is a godsend. Since Teslas are electric, there's no engine that needs to run for the systems to work. In fact, you can run any system in the car without needing the car to remain on. This includes the heater and air conditioner. Dog mode allows you to set the temperature in the car just like you'd set it at home, and the car will keep the interior of the vehicle at that temperature until you return. It doesn't matter whether the cabin needs to be heated or cooled car will control the heating and air conditioning to keep the vehicle at the selected temperature. But there's something that feels wrong, even if there's nothing wrong, when passers-by think you're leaving your dog in a hot car. You don't want someone to break your window to rescue your dog. To address this, remember that flat panel? It has several different displays to alert passers-by of certain things. And one of those is dog mode. It lets passers-by know that dog mode is on, by displaying an image of a digital dog saying internal temperature is set at say 69 or 70 degrees. The only caveat to this is that dog mode only works when your battery is higher than 20%. So don't let your battery run down to 20%. That's a good piece of advice anyway, no matter what you're doing in your car. And I know it goes without saying, but dog mode is for pets only. Next up is storage space, which is large. The Tesla Model Y has 76.2 cubic feet of storage. 72.1 of those is behind the front seat. This is the largest storage space out of all of the SUVs, the crossover SUVs in this class. But it has something really cool. It has something called a frunk, which simply means a front trunk. And that comes in pretty handy, although frankly, most people forget that it's even there because normally an engine goes there. Now let's talk about the rear cabin. For a crossover SUV, this is where the Tesla really shines. The reason is because the car has no drivetrain, it has no transmission, and frankly, it just has a lot more to work with. So there's no funny bump in the middle of the floor. It's completely flat. Also, the distance between the back of the front seat and the front of the back seat seems to be about six inches more than the BMW X3. So if you're transporting family or friends, kids, grandkids, etc., there's a lot more space in the back and you can comfortably fit three in the back seat. There's also a seven seat option with two additional seats in the way back and the people face the other way. But frankly, I've never heard of anyone taking this option. Perhaps it's because driving backwards is not a pleasant experience for some people. Next, let's talk about what everybody will like. First is driver control. It's amazing. The Tesla Model Y battery is at the very bottom of the car sitting seven inches off the ground and weighing 1,700 pounds. The entire car weighs 4,416 pounds, so 38% of the weight of the car is at the very bottom. And frankly, it's evenly distributed between the front and the back. Add to this the fact that the motors, which weigh between 70 and 100 pounds each, according to Tesla, sit one in the front and one in the back. There are two of them, and those are also at the bottom of the car, this means that the weight is evenly distributed, 46% in the front, 54% in the back. In other words, it was designed to handle really, really well, and it does. 
Now let's talk about what Tesla aficionados will like. First, it's the white interior with the charcoal gray trim. The bright white interior with the carbon offset is the Tesla signature interior. And if you wanna go all in Tesla, this is the way to go. Now, if you do it, it's an additional thousand dollars. Now, some people are worried that the white leather or pleather, I suppose is the right definition, will get dirty. And I was worried about that too on my first Tesla. And so I got a black interior. And after I did that, I regretted it. What sold me on the white interior was that one of the Tesla demonstrations showed a glass of red wine being dumped on the front seat. It sat there for an hour and then was cleaned up later and there wasn't any sign of the wine whatsoever. When I saw that demonstration, I thought two things. The first was that I was sold on the fact that the white doesn't get dirty or at least can be cleaned quickly and easily. The second is I hope that nobody really is trying to get red wine off of their white seats because there are bigger problems if that's the case. Now let's talk about what everybody won't like. The first is that there's no spare tire. Now you would think with all of that extra room that Tesla would find a way to put a spare tire in the vehicle. Why not put it in the front? Well, the reason isn't because they want to give you extra space. It's because the vehicle sits on an aluminum frame and a battery on that frame. And they don't want you putting a jack on the aluminum frame and damaging either the frame or the battery. To solve this problem, Tesla has its own roadside assistance. You can call roadside assistance using your telephone. You can use the app on your phone, or you can push a button on your flat panel. All three of them will get you to the Tesla roadside assistance, and they will send a flat panel truck to pick up your car and take it to a service station where they will then replace the tire. The next is the paint. Tesla is not known for its paint. Let's be candid. There are quite a few complaints about the paint. Nothing that is so horrible that when you look at a car or a Tesla that you say, that's not great paint, but there are things that you notice if you're really looking hard. If I open my car door, for example, and I look inside my door well, there's a white primer in there. It's really hard to see unless you look at it from a certain angle. Nobody else will ever notice it, but it's there and it bothers me. When I received my Model Y, there was a dimple on the door and that was noticeable. Tesla, of course, took care of this immediately and of course there was no charge. It came back looking perfect. So is the Tesla Model Y the ultimate retirement car? Well, it's pretty close actually. If you can get your mind around the fact that you have extended charge times on long distance trips, that you have to pay a la carte for a few add-ons that you'd normally get for free on a normal car, and the fact that your insurance is slightly higher those elements are on one side of the ledger, but on the other side, what's excellent is everything else we talked about and certainly retiree friendly. If you like this video, check out that video, the best way to buy a car in retirement. Also, don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get alerted the next time I post a video, I post once or twice a week. This is Jeff Schmidt. Thanks for watching.